The Marvel Cinematic Universe is already full of so many villains when you see from the point of view of Earth. 616, and when Sony Pictures keep on spinning new characters, it becomes a chaotic mess. Before we get into the movie details, let us ponder over the post credit scenes that most of us are interested in. The first one is indeed the one I'm talking about. The character Null is the one that Eddie and Venom defeated in the battle. Keeping him alive as King in Black would mean the continuation of the storyline that Marvel can make use of in the future with the upcoming Avengers movie. Then there's a second one. Though Venom sacrificed himself in the battle in order to save Eddie, the second post credit scene revealed that his part is still alive, along with the barman shown in the beginning of the movie. This could only mean that Spider-Man as Earth-616's Peter Parker might end up with him at some point in the future. The two post credit scenes are indeed important for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The movie, however, is just a means to an end for Tom Hardy's character and give him good rest. The storyline is all about alien invasion with all the other Hollywood-style crap that we have gotten used to with. Unfortunately, the character played by Reese Ifans has no significance in the MCU. All the hue and cry around his presence in the movie trailer is all good for nothing. He is not Dr. Connors or any other significant character in MCU. He is just a man living in an alternate MCU universe. The storyline does have its charm and introduces the character Agony as a surprise package. In fact, the movie starts with Dr. Payne's, played by Juno Temple, background story. By the epic battle, she turns into Agony, and therefore I believe Sony Pictures have kept something for themselves. A spin-off movie about her could be in the making, or maybe not. Who could predict Sony Pictures' fate? Madame Webb was an epic failure. No one knows how Craven the Hunter will be received by the audience. But I'm hoping that Sony Pictures can spin it around with agony, just like they did with Venom. The Last Dance is an emotional end for Tom Hardy's successful run in the Spider-Man franchise that no one predicted. The movie has nothing else to offer other than hints at what Sony or Marvel would be busy making in the future. I would suggest you can give it a try if you're bored of the regular routine mundane work, but don't keep your hopes high for any surprises, impeccable storyline, or great acting performances. All these movie aspects fall flat on screen, and we are left with something to hope for only in the future.